Hey, what's up, YouTube? This is We All Juggle Knives with a review of the K Bar BK21 Kukri. The blade length on this is 13 and a quarter inches. The steel is 1095 Crow Van, high carbon steel. Uh, the thickness is listed as 0.188 inches. The weight on this is listed as 1.4 pounds. It's got full tang construction. Right, you see the lanyard hole there. It's an extended tang that turns into an impact surface. Those handle scales are ultra mid. It fits my hand really well. Now my hand is medium large for a guy. And as you can see, I've beat this up already and I've got some usage footage coming up later. And right, it's got a black coating on the blade. The K-Bar BK series it is an epic series of knives. Some of them no longer made anymore. I've recommended many. One of the most famous is the uh, BK9, a much beloved blade. Here is a size and shape comparison with the other BK series knives that I own. From the left is the BK15, the BK5 Magnum Camp, the BK9, and the BK21. So as you can see, this is a long blade. I mean, it makes the BK9 look short. It is the length of a machete. Now, I don't know if you want to consider this a large knife or a machete. Uh, kukris are derived from the Nepalese kukri, which is the traditional knife of Nepal. They call it a knife, but has a lot in common with machetes. Uh, for example, it's a good chopper. It's good for clearing brush, clearing trails. Here is the sheath that this comes with. It's got a reinforced tip. It's open at the top. It's got a single retaining strap with a button closure. It's a pretty durable sheath. It's more like a machete sheath, but you pull it up and out. It's okay for what it is. Like I said, more of a machete sheath. Here is some usage footage. So you see, you can use the inner curve of the kukri for fine work including making shavings. Now, if I had a choice, I'd probably just use, um, you know, one of my small Mora knives for this. But let's say that you wanted to use one tool uh, for all your cutting tasks. This will serve. Now, if you really intend to do this, you might want to make that little, the first few inches, right, of that inner curve. You might want to sharpen that up real, real fine because, you know, you're not chopping with that part anyway. And then it would do even better, right? But it's adequate. You know, it's adequate for this task. If you wanted to get bushcrafty with this, you could. And speaking of the edge on this, it came with a really nice sharp edge. There was no burr on the edge. I did not have to touch up the edge at all before using it. You'd be surprised how many knives, even from good companies, have a, have a burr, which is a lip of metal overhanging one side of the edge. It's a remnant of sharpening with a grinder. But this was done right. It was finished off right by someone who knew what they were doing. Behold, my pile of shavings. You know, you get your ferro rod make a campfire but yeah the edge on this it was good and on the k-bar website they say it's a the edge is 20 20 degree angle on that edge all right so there's my shavings and here it is yes off with its head it splits rather well all right so the point is not that you're going to replace all your hatchets with kukris that's not the point i just want to show that this can hit hard it can split uh, you can baton with a kukri, but I'd rather just... Oh, that one had a knot in it. <laughs> little durability test. You can baton with a kukri. It's a little awkward because the shape, but you can. But I'd rather just hit the pieces. Another knot. Some of this wood is re really twisty. Yeah, I'd rather just hit the pieces like it was a hatchet. You know? So it does hit hard. Um, 1.4 pounds is the weight, so... All right, laws of physics is not going to hit as hard as a four-pound head uh, splitting axe or anything. But the point is you could use this as a hatchet 
if you wanted to. Boom. And so you saw this blade made short work of splitting a very large pile of wood. It hit hard, you know, the handle scales are smooth, but I had gloves as you saw, which gave me a strong grip. Allowed for hard hits, and it was a good way to just put some usage on this blade. The Kukri blade shape is useful for all kind of things, you know, uh, slicing, splitting, uh, fine work. And yet more usage footage. Now this piece of a log was really hardened and dry and weathered and nasty. This was some very hard wood. As you can see, it's woodpeckering through. I did speed this up because it was boring. But I would prefer to use like a saw or a really heavy axe against uh, something like this. But I figured it would be a good test. Okay. And as you can see, it doesn't bite deeply in. That's because of the wood. It, it's not a problem with the edge. Believe me, this will, this could take a person's head off easily. And if this were softer wood, it would definitely sink in deeply. But I figured, you know, that nasty, nasty uh, log would be a good test. And it's an easy way to put some hard usage on it. Yeah. I mean, you, you see the di diameter of that. Yeah, if it can get through that, I have faith that it could get through anything. Obviously, if you have softer, more moist wood, like an inch in diameter, this thing can sail through no problem. All right, so that was a good test. It was a little, it was kind of a pain in the ass, to be honest with you, to woodpecker through that. Now you may be wondering, what's the difference between the BK-21 and K-Bar's other Kukri, which you see there, the K-Bar Kukri Machete. Well, basically the BK-21 has a longer blade, a more narrow blade, and as you can see, the differences, there's differences in the grinds of the blade, uh, the placement of the bevel, for example, and overall the BK-21 is uh, higher quality and thus also more expensive. You know, the machete is just that. It's more like a machete and it's good as a machete, right? But it's just not as high quality. Now, the handles are also different. You can see the BK-21 true full tang with an impact surface on the pommel, whereas the machete, it's got a craton handle enclosed tang with side hilts. Oh, by the way, I will include a link in the text description box to uh, a website a web store, CampingSurvival.com. I actually got this kukri from them. The information, the demonstration you're getting in this video, that would not have happened uh, without CampingSurvival.com, so I want to thank them. And check out the link, because they're basically a U.S.-based business. It's run by a veteran. They sell preparedness supplies, paracord, food preps, pretty much everything preparedness. Final thoughts on this, well, it's a great chopper, it's a multitasking blade, slicing, fine work. Uh, you could also just clear softer vegetation with, you know, the, the inner curve of this, it kind of works like a sickle. But all in all, it's a very high quality blade, you know, the K-Bar's 1095 Crovan is a great steel. And just the forward Kukri design has worked for ages. Right now, the current price on this it is pretty expensive, no doubt. And, you know, with K-Bars, I've found that the prices tend to do tend to go down over time. So I don't want to go off on a huge rant on the current price just because a year from now that could be completely out of date. Right? So it's a bit expensive now. Really depends on your budget. But the blade itself, the design itself, is very solid. Some had said that they want it thicker, like the real um, Nepalese Kukris, but why would you want to compete with those? I mean, they already have the whole huge, thick, heavy thing covered. So no, this is good for uh, you know the American market. So yeah, I love the design. The only drawback is the current price, but you know, them's the brakes. K bar is popular. Now, uh, please remember to check out that website. Now, you don't have to buy this. They have 
they have a huge selection of everything from uh, blades to MREs, so you don't have to buy this, but I guarantee you will find something for everyone there. I hope you enjoyed this review. This has been We All Juggle Knives.